we have two new driver announcements to talk about. The year might be winding down, but that hasn't stopped NASCAR silly season from handing out a few announcements here and there. Sure, they've gotten a lot slower and there's some more time in between each one, but we do have a couple this week to talk about. First up is Matt DiBenedetto, and he's apparently signed something, at least according to his Twitter account where he posted just the pin emoji. And whoever started the trend of just posting the pin emoji, I don't like it. I like it the exact opposite way I like Dale Jarrett going out and kissing the bricks and making that a tradition. This pin thing, don't like it. Don't do it. Just make your announcement or just surprise everybody when it's going to happen. But Matt DiBenedetto has apparently signed something. Whether that's a NASCAR contract, an Amazon employment agreement to be a Jehovah's Witness, maybe he and his wife are open up a Chick-fil-A franchise. I don't honestly know and I haven't really asked around to find out where Matt D's going because frankly, I just don't care that much. I kind of like to take the same approach that the Fox Truck Series booth takes to when cautions come out and it doesn't happen on camera. We're all sitting around waiting in anticipation and then when they show it on screen, you're like, oh, that's what happened. We all celebrate together and then go to a commercial. I'm not going to have a commercial for you because I'm not wearing a break hard t-shirt and so I have Tupac uh, wearing a Cincinnati pullover on. So no commercials this time. But for Matt D, he has apparently signed something. And now the rumors have been going around the internet on where that he could possibly be headed. Private P on Twitter, and I, I don't think I can say his full name without maybe getting a strike or flagged by YouTube. Regardless, it's a she, so I apologize for referring to them as a he, but they posted that Matt Benedetto is headed to AM Racing next year. The same team that Brett Moffat raced for in 2023, the same team that has signed Haley Deegan to drive the 15 car in 2024. That's where Matt Benedetto is heading. I got a DM this today on Friday that he's not headed there. He's instead signed a Cup Series contract. And the person that gave me this information, I trust a lot. They've been pretty forthcoming uh, on where people are going and have, you know, solidified a few things for me in the past. So I'm going to go ahead and say that they might be right. At least I'm siding with what they're saying. So if Matt Benedetto does sign with AM Racing, though, and Private P is correct, then the Cell family is certainly getting two people that they align with very well. Uh, it's also going to keep the Fab Shop in business, right? Haley Deegan and Matt Benedetto, both known for roughing some things up. And, you know, if delusional fan hype converted into on-track speed, then AM Racing, if that's their lineup, would certainly be at the top of the charts. Unfortunately, it does not, so look for them to be more mid-pack uh, than at the top of the, of the leader's board. So that's maybe where Matt Benedetto is heading. There's also, obviously, like I said, I got uh, some conflicting information that he is headed to the Cup Series. And when you look through the Cup Series roster, there's no rides open other than the 16 car at Colleg, which appears to be going towards the All-Star uh, method, where AJ Allmendinger is going to drive a handful of races. I assume we'll have some other people hop in there as well, since it is a chartered car and it does have to enter into all 36 races, plus the two exhibition races as well. And then there's the Rick Ware car, but I was told that this is not a bad Cup ride, so I'm going to go ahead and kick Rick Ware out to the side. No offense to the people over Rick Ware, but they're not mid-pack team at this point. And hopefully they will be in the near future and signing Justin Haley and aligning with, with RFK is a step in the right direction. So that leaves no other chartered rides available. So unless he's running an open car or a part-time deal with someone else, I have a few ideas. I'm not going to publicize them because I don't necessarily know and I'm still waiting on more information. But Matt Benedetto does have something signed, and I guess we'll find out here in the near future what that is. On the other hand, Matt Benedetto's old ride, the number 25 truck with Rackley War Racing, does have a new driver, and that new driver will be Ty Dillon in 2024. And I know, some people are going to clown on Ty Dillon for taking a truck series ride next year and not being in the Cup Series. And frankly, I think it's the perfect landing spot for Ty Dillon. Where he's currently at in his driving career, he needs to go back down to somewhere where he can get a level of confidence up. And I think Rackley War is the perfect place to do that. And it's not a high pressure situation either. It's not like going and getting in a Gibbs car in the Xfinity Series and being expected to win. Instead, he's going to join a mid-pack truck series team. A team where Matt Benedetto had two top fives, 12 top tens, and a playoff appearance in 2023. If Ty can do something similar to that in 2024, that's a success. And Ty does have three truck series wins to his resume. Matt Benedetto... De Matt Benedetto only has one. That name is really hard to say kind of fast, so my apologies there. I do try to make a great effort on getting everyone's name correct and at least pronouncing it. That right there did not work out well for my mouth at all. 
Don't isolate that. Regardless, Matt D getting out of that ride opened up the spot for Ty Dillon, and Ty can go and now try to perform there. And I think it's a low-pressure situation, at least from the outside. It's a fringe playoff contender, and if you get into the playoffs, that's a big check on the list there. And then if you announce that you're going to leave, you know, four weeks prior to the end of the season, you'll probably get fired. So maybe don't do that if you're Ty Dillon. Regardless, I respect the fact that he didn't go to Pop Pop and take a handout like his brother Austin did. Instead, he's trying to carve his own path in the NASCAR world. And he's not taking rides from his granddad at the family team just so that he can have a ride. And, you know, it's admirable. Could he have had more success if he stayed within that RCR stable, didn't go to Jermaine, and then try to, you know, pave his own way outside of that and maybe just took an RCR deal? Absolutely. But at the same time, there is a, you know, a bit of honor in going out there and trying to do this yourself. I think Ty Dillon is actually very talented. Uh, I think, unfortunately, he's never been in that position where he can maybe show off that level of talent that he has. And, I mean, he has one Xfinity Series win, which came at the Brickyard at Indianapolis. And then he has, on the Oval, not the road course, and then he has a three Truck Series win, the second place finish in the Truck Series Championship. And he's a three-time stage winner in the Cup Series. So there is that. Every now and then you see these flashes of really good driving from Ty Dillon. In the last two years, he's had some unfortunate you know, dealings in the Cup Series. Gets bounced out of Petty GMS after one year, gets bounced out of Spire after one year, and now he's headed down to Rackley War. And again, I think driving for Rackley War in the Truck Series is better than running in a backmarker NASCAR Cup Series team because at least you have the chance to contend down there. And you can only really have maybe four to five chances to contend in the Cup Series if you're a backmarker team, and those all, of course, come on super speedways and drafting tracks. So Ty going back down, again, makes a lot of sense. And I think a lot of drivers, I've talked about this before, there's certain drivers where their talent level, you know, it caps out. It hits the ceiling at a certain level. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Like Elliot Sadler, perfect example. He's an okay cup town. He's a fringe cup town. He has three NASCAR Cup Series wins to his record, Bristol, Fontana, Texas. I don't know why I remember all of those, but I do. But when he goes down the Xfinity Series, he's a perennial championship contender. Same with Justin Allgaier. I think Justin Allgaier could have competed at the Cup Series level if he had the right opportunity, but he's a guy, too, where his talent level is really good in the Xfinity Series, so why not just stay there? We've seen guys make careers out of the Truck Series. Matt Crafton, he's not been very good in any of the other series, but he's good in the Truck Series. Mike Skinner, great in the Truck Series. Johnny Benson, Johnny Benson's a bit of a different case, but he had a really good Truck Series career. Ted Musgrave is another one. Ron Hornaday, another guy. All had great careers down there, and that's just because that's maybe where their talent level, you know, finds its level at. Sam Hornish, stunk in the Cup Series, was really good in the Xfinity Series. And maybe that's Ty Dillon. Maybe this is his calling. He just goes down to the Truck Series, and he becomes that Truck Series guy, that next guy that's going to be there for the better part of a decade or so until he's ready to retire. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? We've seen guys get into the NASCAR Hall of Fame just solely based off of their Truck Series career. So for Ty, I think, it's, again, it's a great landing spot for him. Rackley War gets a really good driver, a guy who's more than likely going to bring the equipment home in one piece. He's going to go out there and race respectfully with most people more often than not, unless you're Kevin Harvick at Martinsville. And, but for the most part, he's a bit humble now, especially as he's gotten older. And I think that they hired a guy that can definitely go out there and get them results. Sure, they could have gone out there and tried to get somebody, you know, a younger guy, maybe somebody out of the car store, somebody with money. And Ty, of course, is likely bringing a little bit of money. Rackley War is sponsoring 16 races, and the remaining races will be announced at a later date. I assume maybe Ferris is kind of going to follow Ty over there. We'll have to wait and see. But Rackley War got a good driver here. Ty Dillon lands in a good spot. Matt Benedetto has something signed. We'll wait and see what that is, whether it's AM Racing or a Cup Series ride, which I can only imagine would be a partial ride. At this point, silly season's still going. We're still waiting on Rick Ware to announce who's going to drive that 15 car next season. And then Colleg, uh, maybe who's going to fill in the rest of those uh you know, races in the 16 car uh, alongside AJ Allmendinger. But for the most part, everything else has been accounted for right now. And we're just sitting around for the next month waiting for the clash to get here the first weekend in February. So like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments, where do you think Matt D's going? Uh, subscribe on TikTok at Break Hard and then Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard One.